Exercise bands such as these have revolutionized the way I rehabilitate patients. And I'm gonna give you seven advantages of exercise bands, but there's four disadvantages. So you wanna watch the entire video. I will explain all these things and let you know why I think these are valuable or invaluable. Then at the end of the video, I will demonstrate, there'll be a, a thing right here you can click to watch myself actually using exercise bands as a workout. And I will let you know how to go ahead, do it and do it, how many sets to use, how often to do it, and all the things you need to know about how to get yourself better. So let's get started. Number one, the benefit of an exercise band is that it gives you variable resistance. And what that means is, essentially, if you remember in the old days, the Nautilus machines, what happened with the Nautilus machines is as you lifted a weight, the weight got heavier and heavier and heavier as you contracted the muscle, as opposed to the weight being a constant amount. So if I lift a dumbbell and I lift 25 pounds, it's always 25 pounds. But imagine for a moment if I can lift the weight and I start here and it's 10 pounds and then it's 15 and 20, 25, 30. It gets harder as you lift the weights. The bands do the same thing. So if you anchor it to one area, right here there's not a lot of resistance, but as I extend the band, what happens is it gets harder and harder. So this variable resistance allows you to increase the tension as you do the lift. There are some advantages of that in strength training. Many times people that are those super power lifters and stuff, very often they'll either use bands or chains in addition to their weights. So like when they do a bench press, it's not as difficult down here, but as they get harder to, do, to increase their power, they can really throw the weight up and the bands or chains will allow the tension to get harder as they lift. Number two, less joint pain. This is the number one reason, I should have put this as number one, freaking idiot. The number one reason why I recommend bands as opposed to weights for patients because I've been a doctor of chiropractic for 28 years. I treat people holistically. We try to get them better naturally. And one of the problems is as the athlete gets older, myself included, you start to notice that weights just start to tear up your joints. And the one advantage if you're lifting a, a band, for example, is if you're doing a press, as you are pressing like this, your body has to actually stabilize all the little micro movements as you're lifting a weight. So that's a good thing, but the bands seem to put less tension on the joints. So whereas a person would lift a weight and get some shoulder pain, it's interesting when they use bands, they don't get as much shoulder pain, probably because of those little stabilizing muscles. Which brings us to number three, greater joint overall health. When you exercise a joint, let's say a shoulder or a hip or a knee, you want to exercise all the various muscles of that joint. Very often, when you go into a gym, you have to use different machines to actually help do all those muscles. And even then, many machines do not allow you to stabilize the muscle. So again, the same example, if I use a pressing here, my little muscles of my rotator cuff have to stabilize the shoulder while I'm actually exercising the deltoid muscle. This is a great advantage and further results in less joint pain. I've had many patients that have joint pain and the band exercises really help them. And again, at the end of the video, I will show you how I personally do it. And then you could buy whatever bands you want, but I've been doing this for a long time and I've found that certain brands tend to work better because sometimes the one thing is these things can rip. So I'll always put the links down below to the ones that I personally use. Number four, better joint angles. So one of the disadvantages of weights is you can only push a weight against gravity. Whereas with the band, you can actually change the angle with which you move. So certain angles will work the muscles slightly differently. And the great thing is I keep using a shoulder because I'm, it's in frame, but sometimes if you bring a weight back like this, 
and press, it could cause shoulder impingement for someone who has a bone spur or an old tear of a rotator cuff. So what happens is you could find the correct joint angle that causes less pain for a person, and that's a great advantage. Number five, these are very inexpensive. When you look at the link down below, when you can get them on Amazon, even the highest quality brands are very inexpensive when it comes to buying exercise equipment. There's no way you could buy a full a rack of weights. I was gonna say rack of lamb. There's no way you could buy a full gym piece of equipment, put it in your garage and do it for anything less than what these things cost. I have had some of my bands last for over 10 years and that's a great investment. So inexpensive, boy, if you're looking for an inexpensive way to work out, these things are awesome. Number six, you could work out anywhere. Sometimes I'll take my bands to a park and work out at a park. I will work out at home. They take up less space. It's just so convenient to work out with bands. The seventh and final reason why exercise bands have an advantage is because of the variable resistance. Now, where I'm going with this is it significantly lowers the risk of injury. For example, many people will tear their bicep tendon or their pec tendon or their quadricep tendon. And the reason why is because if you're lifting a weight, as you lower the weight, if I'm doing a bench press, for example, and I've got, you know, 300 pounds, I don't lift 300 pounds. I'm using that as an example. I don't even know what I lift anymore. As you lower the weight, that 300 pounds is causing tension on the muscle as the muscle is lengthening. Tons of things on YouTube where people have ripped a, a pack or ripped a bicep off their bone. The great thing about the variable resistance is as you're, lo as you're lowering the weight, the tension gets less. Thus, there's significant reduction of tendon injuries and tendon tears. This is why it's such a great advantage to do these things for rotator cuff strengthening because especially if a person has a tear already, this can really help them rehabilitate the muscle and tendon without too much risk of further injury. All right, let's talk disadvantages now. Number one, the strength curve. And this is very, very important because the uber strong people, the people that take this stuff really seriously when it comes to strength and power training will tell you that the eccentric loading as you're lowering the weight is the one that really builds muscle the best. Tension at the extreme range of motion where the muscle is lengthened is the key to building really good strength. But that's the pinnacle of strength training. Most of my patients are not doing that. And because that is where the amount of risk really increases, this is for the really powerful strength athletes, which isn't me. I just wanna get stronger and not have injuries and joint pain. So the problem with a band is as you are coming down, the tension on the muscle actually decreases, whereas the big, strong, you know, bulky people want it to go up. Number two disadvantages, if you get cheap bands, they will start to tear and rip and sometimes can snap at you. And what you don't wanna be doing is do some type of face pull and the thing snaps, whacks you in the eye. That's a very dangerous thing. Sometimes these things can snap on you and that is no bueno. That's why I recommend spending a little bit extra money and buying quality bands. That is a great investment. As they start to tear over the years, then you can simply buy new ones if need be. But you know, when iron rusts, it's pretty cool to lift weights with just rusty irons. You just feel like Rocky won. But bands, you need to make sure they're not gonna tear on you. The third disadvantage is some exercises are just kind of cumbersome and difficult to do when it comes to performing the exercise. I personally find that doing squats with bands, I've seen people do it on the internet where what they do is they hook it to their feet down here and 
they will bring it here and they will squat down and come up. And sure, that's, that's doable. I just don't feel as though it's a very easily coordinated move. So certain exercises are more difficult to perform with bands, and that is a disadvantage. Fourth disadvantage is for tendon strengthening and athletic protection from injury. And what has been found is when you eccentrically load the exercise, it preferentially strengthens the tendon. So for example, if I'm doing a deadlift or an RDL, and let me, let me fix this here. I'll show you what I'm talking about. Let's get here. Okay, so I can do a deadlift here by grabbing this and then coming up. Now, as I come up, the tension on the band increases, but really to strengthen your hamstrings, you want to go like a straight leg deadlift. As you go down like this, you want more and more weight as you're going down. These things don't work for that. So a big disadvantage from a sports performance is you wanna train your body to withstand load during the lowering phase of the exercise or the eccentric loading to strengthen your tendons and protect your tendons. These simply do the exact opposite. Now let's discuss how to go about doing these exercises. At the end of the video, again, I'll show you uh, my demonstration of how I perform the exercise, but what I would do to start out is set yourself a time of three times per week. You're gonna do three sets, which means, let me just give you an example of a, of a press here. You will do one, two, three, four, and build up to about 10 to 15 repetitions. Once at 15 repetitions, your arm should be getting tired. You're gonna rest it for about a minute and then repeat the same number, about 15 repetitions three sets of 15 repetitions, then you go to the next exercise. You may decide to do a pressing exercise like this, okay? Or you could hook it up to a door and pull. Three sets of 10 to 15. Once it gets too easy to do 15 repetitions, then what you would do in this particular case, so right now I'm holding the, the, the band here. If this becomes too easy, and what you can do is shorten the range. You see that? Now I made it so that at the end it's a little tighter. That's how you would do it. And then as that gets too easy, you shorten it again. See that? And you could do it that way. Now, once it gets too easy for the actual band, you can add another band or you could use a different band. Most of the bands, when you buy these products, on Amazon, which again, the link is down below, it comes with multiple bands. So if one band is too easy for you, you use the next band. And what you'll find is for different exercises, there are different strength curves for you. Everybody's individual. So an average workout like that should take you about 30 minutes to go through the entire process. Now, personally, you'll see when I do my exercises, I like to do one set to total failure. And I find that more economical in terms of time. You'll see in the video that I'm gonna show you that I did the entire my entire body in under 12 minutes. Now the disadvantage of this is that it's very intense. I will do an exercise where I will start out and go and go, and I will go until the point of total failure where I can't even push it any farther. And then I will try to do some partial sets. So I will try to see God at the end of each set. That's not recommended to start with, but I find it a very effective way to get a great exercise in a short period of time. Because I like to ride bicycles, I don't particularly want to spend a lot of time doing this. I want the most bang for the buck. So I do one set of each exercise. So if I do seven exercises, I'm only doing seven total sets, but they are to an extreme failure so that so such that I cannot do a single rep more. And some of the science behind that shows that if you work a muscle to total failure, 
you are getting all of the muscle fibers or as much of them as you can. And so that's how the uh, big boy people do it when they work out. Uh, but I find that that principle works for me from a time perspective as well as it's effective. Instead of doing three sets of 15, I do one set and it may be very intense. So if you like this video, give me a thumbs up. All my links are down below. And right now, watch this video right here on the right hand side because this is gonna show you the exact exercises that you could use bands with and how exactly I did it. You can watch it in real time.